Shilonen, good thing you're here. I'm wondering if I can... Oh, uh, the shelf on the left, second row down, first X on the right. That one's yours. And the garden hoe belongs to Iknal, and the hammer is Pakal, so make sure you take the one that's yours. I haven't even said why I'm here. But looks like you're about to head out for a break. <laughs> yes, but I am going to take it right here. The temperature is just perfect today. Really? But doesn't it feel a lot hotter than usual? I really don't want to stay out in this heat. Exactly. In hot weather like this, customers don't tend to stick around and talk when they're coming to place orders or pick up the goods. I see. Oh, here comes another customer. I'll just leave you to it then, and pick up my axe. Sure, sounds good to me. Hey, Shilonen! Oh, Traveler, Paimon! We meet again. Oh, you two seem to be in good spirits. How's your uh, Pilgrim's Chronicle been? Run into any issues? Oh, good. It was also my first time receiving a Pilgrim's Chronicle, even though I've already turned it over to you. There are still a lot of things that could go wrong, so I wasn't sure if there'd be any issues. Huh? So, uh, what are the chances that something might still go wrong? Well, less than the chances of Mualani accidentally falling off a spirit way, I'd say. Oh, well, that definitely would never happen. I found the actually Lonin. Thanks a lot. By the way, Nitchka's birthday's coming up real soon. Are you planning to visit her? I prepared a gift and was just getting ready to take it to her. Uh, you're not planning on giving the kid a full set of pliers again, are you? Or, let me guess, woodworking tools? Yeah, that's right. Flowers will wither and toys will break and snacks are quickly forgotten once they're eaten. But a set of durable work tools will always stay with you and get you through many sticky situations. Well, still, I won't be giving Nichka any tools this year. She wrote me a letter saying that she'd like a copy of To Kill the Brave. The book is not what you call a bestseller, but luckily, I have a few copies in my collection. They were really old editions that were published a long time ago, but they should still be readable. <laughs> Children her age love fairy tales. The last time I was at Tassoli's, I even brought an HK. Uh. Huh. Wait. What did I bring her again? It must have been her favorite thing, but, uh. Why can't I remember it anymore? Oh, it is quite hot today. Seems you're about to pass out from the heat. Do you even remember your own name? My memory can't be this bad. It's just these last few days. <sighs> I've been forgetting things for some odd reason. Well, in that case, why don't you use the Blaze Gem inscription you have as a memo to engrave some important things to remember? After all, that inscription will never wear out, and it's easy to carry. I'd say that's quite a fitting use for it. <clears throat> you do have a point, but... My inscription is almost already full. No, no. I engraved some wishes on my Blaze Jam inscription. You know, just some dreams that I have for the future and things I'd like to accomplish one day. Even though Tassoli has said that from an aesthetic point of view, it would be best for people to keep their inscription short, this Blaze Jam inscription was still made by a name engraver the forger of ancient names themselves. Everyone thinks that the inscription she made might have some wondrous powers. So, many people who bought Blaze Gem inscriptions engraved their wishes and dreams on them in hopes that they would come true. Sounds kind of like a wish granter. But if you do that, won't everyone be able to see your wishes and dreams? <laughs> Don't worry. We usually ask Tassoli to add the inscriptions for us. She has a unique method of engraving. With her method, the light must be at a certain angle in order to see the text. 
Without the right angle of lighting, the blaze gem inscription will just look like a pretty stone. That's true. In the end, a blaze gem inscription is essentially just a piece of rock. It doesn't have the power to grant people's wishes. Making wishes to it is like uh, shouting into an echoing valley. The only one who will answer is yourself. But using it as a journal for your wishes is also fine. Carrying them with you and taking a look from time to time can be a good source of encouragement. Well, as long as you don't suddenly change your mind and want to take your wishes back, that is. These things are extremely durable. It would take a lot of effort to change the words. And I don't think anyone would willingly part with it either. They're not cheap and very hard to get. If you ever lost it, you'd just be filled with regret. Still, it's, huh, it's really strange. Given Auntie's skill, how could it take so long for her to make one? Huh. Oh, well, I hope someone didn't give her an idea of making fewer and selling for more. <laughs> It's true, Chevin would totally have put that in her ear. Still, I don't think it's such a bad thing for Tasoli to make some money by selling these. At least she and little Nechka are better off now, and won't have to worry about the cost of treating her illness anymore. I was really worried about their family at first, and was even planning to send them some... Uh... Send some... Huh? What was I planning to send to Nechka again? Ugh, this memory of mine. All right, if you stay out in the heat for any longer, I'm afraid even the inscription won't be able to save your memory. You should, uh, go back. Yeah, get some rest. Right, uh, right. <laughs> Please give my regards to Tlesoli and Nechka. <sighs> What's going on? Maybe I should go talk to Aaron Lee to get some medicine. So you'll be going to Nechka's birthday party too, Shilonen? Oh, perfect! Then let's go together! Oh, yeah, sure, but I didn't expect you to know Tosoli too. She hasn't been coming to the tribe much lately, so how did you get a chance to talk with her? Oh, so that's how you met her. She even wants to use volcanic crystal as a forging material. Ah. Guess she's uh, really pulling out all the stops for her daughter. Then let's just go and ask. Come on, I want to give her the book anyway. Huh? Wait a second, our birthday gift's supposed to be a surprise? If we ask Nechka, then she'll know what gift we'll be giving her. And that would ruin the surprise. But if you don't ask her, then how will you know what kind of present she would like? Here's another idea. Perhaps you can also give her a storybook based on what she wrote in her letter. That might be a good option. But shouldn't we give it a little more thought? If we all give her books, it might seem like we didn't put much effort into it. Shilonen, have you really never asked her what she would like the most? There must be something else she'd like besides books. Unfortunately, no. Nechka's illness has kept flaring up over the past few years. Apparently, she couldn't do anything during that time other than rest in bed. She didn't even have the strength to talk to anyone. It wasn't until recently that she started to recover from her illness and regained strength to write letters to others. Anyway, there's no need to overthink it. Worst case scenario, I can split the book into two volumes and we can each give her one. No, that's terrible! That would really look like we didn't try! Let's just go ask Nechka. Even though it would ruin the surprise, we could at least get her something that would make her happy. Anyway, could you tell us a bit more about the book that you're getting her? Is it really that unpopular? Well, it's a little difficult to explain. Y you see, there are actually two versions of To Kill the Brave. The premise of the book is pretty straightforward. It's basically about a set of twin brothers working to defeat a demon lord. But after defeating the demon lord, the older brother, Tequil, discovers that the king's spirit has possessed his younger brother, Remok. In the ending of the original story, the older brother kills his younger brother to defeat the demon lord, before jumping into a volcano. I remember there was one line that was super popular at the time. If I still remember right, 
after being possessed by the goddess Kualikwe, Rimak said, I do not wish to see your blood be reduced to ash, but I have seen the light of your heart and spirit. Remember my name, brother. As long as you remember me, I will never have left. The other version was released only recently. The author heard a suggestion from someone and suddenly decided to try and make a stake in the fairy tale market, so the story was revised. In the revised version, the brothers killed the demon lord together and both survived. According to the author, this gave the story a happy ever after kind of ending. However, the revised version was not well received. After a month on the market, it had hardly sold any copies and the books were collecting dust on the store shelves. The store owners desperately tried to get rid of the book and have resorted to all sorts of promotions and discounts to sell it. Even now, the only edition of To Kill the Brave you can find in the market is the newer one, whereas the older edition is nearly impossible to find. Anyway, I couldn't bring myself to give such a poorly rated book to Nechka, so I spent a few days looking and managed to find a few copies of the old edition in a warehouse. I picked out a copy that looked relatively new and wrapped it up as a present for Nechka. If you're interested, I can give you this extra copy to read. The pages are pretty old, though, so please be gentle with it. Oh, and uh, here's a copy of the newer edition, too. They gave me a free copy when I went to buy some Shokuadal. So that's how they're trying to sell off the book. Could it really be that bad? Even Paimon's curious now. Let's get going. Tlesoli lives pretty far from the tribe, so it'll take us some time to get there. Go on now, Yangu. Nechka is still resting. <laughs> hey, Tlesoli, we're here! Oh, what a surprise. And even Shilonin is here, too. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen you, Auntie. I received Nechka's letter. She wanted a copy of To Kill the Brave, right? Well, I've brought the book for her. There are several editions of the book in Natlan, and I wasn't sure which version she'd prefer. I asked a messenger from the Science of the Canopy. It seems this softcover edition is one of the most popular options, so I brought it for Nechka. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, Shilonin. Let's go inside. I was just boiling some shokuadal, so you can all try some. Shilonin used to love drinking shokuadal. When she was little, she would always have several cups every time she came to visit me. You were already a big girl by the time I finally had my Nechka. All right, for now let's... Oof. Oh, auntie, let's go inside. Traveler, please help me get her into the house. Oh, Paimon will help too! Be good, Yangu, and don't get in the way. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get indoors. Watch your step, Auntie. Sorry, Nechka's illness has been flaring up recently, so I was up for a few nights. I suddenly started to feel dizzy in the sun. I hope I didn't scare you. Have a seat. I'll fetch you a few cups of shokuadal. Please wait a moment. Oh, I've already brought them over. This cup's for you, Auntie. And these are for you, too. Shokuadal? What does it taste like? Paimon's heard that it can be pretty bitter. Traveler, could you give it a try first? Oh, don't worry. Auntie always adds a lot of sugar. It won't be bitter. The last time you came to visit, you were still just a kid. But now you're a pillar of the children of Echoes. No, of all Natlan, even. Oh, well, it's all thanks to the drinks I had here and the books I happened to read. We heard that you two are from the same tribe, but Paimon had no idea you were so close. When I was little, my parents were always talking about how skilled Auntie was at forging ancient names and how she was a good role model for the rest of us. The moment I became idle at home, they would toss me into Auntie's workshop to watch and learn. Then I would have your parents go back, boil you a pot of shokuadal, and let you play in the house. Yeah. <laughs> And then I would drink and listen to you banging away with your tools in the workshop. But eventually, she moved out of the tribe to find some more space, and I didn't have the chance to visit again after that. But well, why did you seem so 
familiar with the place when you went to the kitchen for the drinks just now. Because the layout of this place is identical to her old house. Let me see. Uh-huh. Yeah, that should be Nichka's bedroom then. That's right. <laughs> I remember you used to hunker down in the room to read and draw. But you're all grown up now. Even if you wanted to live here, I'm afraid you've already outgrown Nechka's bed. That's how Nechka sees Shalonin, too. Whenever she's feeling better, she always asks me when her pen pal sister will be coming to visit. Well, yeah, I'm here now, and even brought a gift as an apology. I'll leave the book here. You said Nechka asked you for the book? I hope it wasn't too much trouble to get. Really, I'm surprised that she even asked you for a present. When she's at home, she'd even ask me for permission to eat some snacks. <sighs> Maybe I've been too strict with her. She's obviously starting to like her big sister more than her own mother. Oh, really? Well, I'd say I really haven't done enough to deserve the title of big sister. Yeah, I uh, wasn't able to help her when she was sick, and I didn't even come and visit her that many times. Well, the only thing I have been able to do is to help her find some books. Don't be too hard on yourself, Shilonin. You have great responsibilities as the name engraver of the tribe. We both know you are far too busy to take care of her. The responsibilities on your shoulders also became far heavier when I... gave up on my work. You just had more important things to tend to, Auntie. No one in the tribe blames you. We all know that Nechka needs her mother's care. But that doesn't change the fact that I gave up on my work. And even now, I still have not found the courage to pick up my hammer again. I'm sorry to leave you to shoulder all the responsibilities alone, Shilonin. <sighs> oh. Ooh, why so somber all of a sudden? Uh, don't be so sad, everyone. Hasn't Nechka gotten better lately? Oh, pff, relax, Auntie. I can handle the work. But once Nechka is back on her feet, you should get back to work and let me have a vacation. You'll be the one who's busy then, and I'll be sitting at the side drinking shokuwaddle and cheering you on. <laughs> if that day really comes, you can have as much shokuwaddle as you like. <laughs> if you asked me before, I wouldn't have even been able to talk about it. But now that she is gradually recovering... I've also gained some courage to face what happened back then. Nechka's illness actually originates from the Abyss. That night, I was in the tribe, having a discussion over the forging of new ancient names. Before we could finish our discussion, the alarm started to ring outside. A horde of monsters from the Abyss suddenly attacked the tribe, so everyone banded together to fight them off. I joined the fray as well, and it wasn't until the monsters were repelled that I got back home with some guards from the tribe. But Nechka was gone. I can't remember how long I spent searching for her. Maybe for two or three days. In the end, we found Nechka at the bottom of a short cliff. She was holding a dried-up embercore flower in her hand, and there were traces of abyssal corruption around her wounds. I know. It was all my fault. Before the incident, Nechka had asked if I could forge an ancient name for her. Work was busy at the time, so I told her that if she could find an ember core flower, I would use it as material to forge her an ancient name. Oh, Nechka, my daughter, my Nechka. I was holding her in my arms, but no matter how many times I called her name, she wouldn't open her eyes and look at me. I was the one who decided to move my workshop to the outskirts of our tribe for work, and I was the one who left her home alone. Oh, my daughter, my Nechka, why do you have to suffer like this? <laughs> Whoa, hey, hey, it's okay, right? Nechka's getting better. She already has the strength to write letters now, doesn't she? We. Uh, well, Shilonin has even brought her a gift! Sorry. I just can't control myself whenever I remember that time. Phew. 
All right. It's not every day that we get guests. I really shouldn't be crying like this. I asked someone to buy some ingredients for me. So why don't you stay for dinner tonight? I'll make some shrimp bisque, grilled fish and mint sauce, and tower tacos. We'll help. That sounds like a lot to make, and we don't want you to tire yourself out. <laughs> Thank you both, but don't worry. It's just a few dishes. I'll be fine. You three just need to make sure everything gets eaten up. I can't eat a lot at this age. Oh, we haven't had anything to eat yet, so don't worry. We'll make sure there are no leftovers. Ah, it just occurred to me that Shalonen likes to eat cheesy crab hot pot. Why don't I make that instead of the grilled fish and mint sauce? I remember you don't like picking out fish bones. Nah, both are fine with me. I've learned to just chew up the fish bones now. Oh, come on now. If you don't want to pick out the bones, I can just take them out for you. Anyway, for dessert, would you like a cup of grain fruit or chocolate? Cup of grain fruit! How about a cup of grain fruit mixed with chocolate? Okay, got it. I'll go start cooking, but could you do me a favor in the meantime? I ordered a bunch of ingredients, and they should be here any minute now. Would you go check by the door and see if they were already here? If so, please bring them in. Come on, Shilonen. Stop lying around. You shouldn't nap before dinner. It'll ruin your appetite. Hey, hey, I'm not a kid anymore, you know. You don't have to worry about my appetite. That's beside the point. If you don't watch out for your health while you're still young, then when you get older, you'll... All right, all right. I'm getting up. We'll go check on the ingredients with Shilonen. It isn't far, so it shouldn't take us long. <sighs> that kid. Hmm, no one's come to deliver the ingredients yet. Paimon thought we'd see someone come flying down on a Yunkasaur as soon as we came out. A messenger from the Science of the Canopy wouldn't be flying here. They usually come climbing down the cliffs nearby. No need to look. There isn't anyone on the cliffs. I... I just saw a ghost. <laughs> hey! You there! Sorry, but does Tlesoli live around here? Oh! Are you the one who's supposed to deliver the ingredients? Ingredients? Are you kidding? I was nearly eaten myself! <laughs> Never mind that now. Those monsters are still hot on my heels. Please, you've got to help me! Shilonen, we... Uh... Where'd she go? Whoa, she's already gone up to fight the monsters? Uh, let's go help her out! All right, that should be it for the monsters. Yeah, it was easier than I thought. Oh, it also seems we're in good luck. The goods weren't damaged either. Strange, we didn't see any monsters on the way here. Yeah, right. I use this road to deliver goods all the time, and I've never been attacked like this before. It's the main road in and out of the tribe, so people often come here to clear out any monsters. This area is usually very safe. I don't know what happened, but it seems like all the monsters around here have gone berserk. Even the docile Tepetlosaurs are in a frenzy. <sighs> Tlesoli doesn't even forge ancient names anymore, so why can't she just move back to the tribe? If she comes back, Nechko will even be able to find some playmates. She's so young and hasn't even... Um, uh, Nechka's playmates. No, wait, I, I feel like my kids have played with her before. They've even told me about Nechka's favorite game. If I remember right, it was... Strange. I always remembered it before. <sighs> How could I forget all of a sudden? Look at that! He has a blaze gem inscription, too! You should go back to the tribe. It seems like you had quite the scare today. We'll take the ingredients back for you. I'll carry these bags, and you two can carry the rest. If you say so. Thank you so much. I guess today's just a really bad day for me to go outside. Hmm. That's so weird. Why is everyone we run into today having trouble remembering stuff? I'm not sure how to say it, but she's 
got a strange feeling about this. Like it's all somehow related. Once you live long enough, you'll eventually start experiencing strange days like this. Let's bring the ingredients back. Otherwise, we won't have anything to eat tonight. Ah, you're finally back. What took you so long? I was starting to worry. Oh, yeah, we uh, ran into some small problems, but everything's fine now. All right, as long as everything's okay now. You all have a seat. I'll get the food ready. It won't take long. Oh, there's so much tasty food! You're amazing, Tosoli! They were all pretty simple dishes to make. Don't be shy. Dig in, everyone. <laughs> Paima will help herself. Um, Paima will have some of this, and uh, this. Oh, and this! Ooh, yeah. Can I get another serving, please? Y you're done already? Do you even chew when you're eating? Of course. Didn't I say that I chew up the fish bones? I'll have just one more fish and leave the rest for Nechka. It's okay. Just go ahead and eat all you'd like. Nechka can't eat these dishes anyway. Her body is too weak to digest these kinds of things. I'll just make some broth for her. Oh no, but Paima thought she'd already recovered from her illness. Injuries caused by the abyss cannot be undone. The doctor said the fact that she's stable is already quite a miracle. But it's okay. Nechka can talk to me now and can even hold my hand. That's more than I could ask for. Even if she will never again know that I am her mother. Wh what do you mean? The doctor said the abyss has had an irreversible effect on Nechka's soul. She... she's lost all her memories from before she was injured. The doctor also said this sort of memory loss isn't like simply forgetting something. Rather, she can no longer remember anything from before that fateful day. Huh? But how does that happen? You know about the woven scrolls that the masters of the Nightwind use to record things, right? Well, generally speaking, forgetting things is like when the woven scrolls would gradually start to fade. As long as you repaint and weave the threads again, the faded memories will come back to life. But the case of Nechka's memory loss is as if her woven scroll had been cut in two, and the portion of the past was burnt to ashes. The books she loved to read, the flowers she took joy to grow, and the time she spent in this house were all cut off by the abyss, and can never be retrieved again. As one example of that, Nechka now only sees me as... A strange, unfamiliar auntie who claims to be her mother. She's a good kid, and doesn't want to upset this lady who's been taking care of her so much, so she still calls me mom. But I've always had a feeling that she's constantly wondering about things like, where is her real mother? Why is she stuck here in this house? Was she abandoned? Nechka really has no idea that her real mother is right in front of her, and has never left. So you plan on recreating Nechka's woven scroll all by yourself? What do you mean? Or should I say, you've already started reweaving that scroll long ago. The delivery guys. I saw it hanging from his waist, so I asked to borrow it from him. <sighs> Don't worry, I'll return the inscription to him once we've figured everything out. These things aren't cheap, after all. When did you know? Yeah, I, I noticed it back when Blaze Gem inscriptions suddenly became popular among the tribe. It was then that I also noticed that everyone wearing Blaze Gem inscriptions had varying degrees of memory loss. Traveler, you've picked up on it too, haven't you? Accessories made using ancient names forging techniques. <laughs> For what's only supposed to be a pretty souvenir, this inscription contains a phlogiston engraving with a truly overkill level of complexity. The shapes and patterns of these engravings are also identical to that of an ancient name. By making just a few slight adjustments to the layout and connections of the main pattern, you can pretty much qualify this blaze gem inscription as a bona fide ancient name. And yet, 
You've never told anyone about these engravings in the Blaze Gem inscriptions that can be activated at any time. <sighs> Am I right, Auntie? I knew you were a sharp one, Shilonin. That's right. I have a way to cure Nechka and restore all her memories. It's actually quite simple. I want to forge an ancient name for Nechka that contains all of her past memories. And the reason they must be approved by the Wyab is because the memories they bear are all stored within the ley lines. Extracting those memories from the ley lines requires the Wyab's assistance. But your plan wouldn't need you to do any of that, right, Auntie? Your Blaze Gem inscriptions will help you complete that part of your plan in the ley lines' place. You will use the inscriptions to form a massive memory bank for Nechka. And the ancient names you're trying to forge will be used to extract corresponding memories from the memory bank. A memory bank? Wait, so the reason all those people were having trouble remembering stuff is because the Blaze Gem inscriptions took away any memories related to Nechka? Using other people's memories of Nechka to reconstruct her past? Ah, this is the first time I've heard of such an idea. You've seen through my plans, Shilonin. You're as outstanding as ever, far more brilliant than me. I intend to use this method to collate all the memories related to Nechka and allow her to regain her past again. But wouldn't extracting memories like that hurt the person carrying the Blaze Gem inscription? Not at all. Every time a Blaze Gem inscription extracts memories, the process is under my precise control. That way, there's no chance of anyone in the tribe getting hurt. This is the central inscription that controls all the other Blaze Gem inscriptions, which will also soon serve as Nechka's ancient name. You made all of this yourself, Tlasoli? Yes. It was lots and lots of work. It was truly exhausting. Or perhaps I've just grown old. You saw it yourself. I nearly fainted just from being in the sun. I could collapse tomorrow, or even in the next few moments, but Nechka's ancient name is still far from completion. I've solved the issue of storing memories, but I still don't know how to connect Nechka up to this central inscription. I've thought you just modify your own ancient name. I considered it, but this matter doesn't have anything to do with my ancient name. It's of no help to me, and I don't need its help now. You know the price to pay for making something like this. Yes, I do. But as long as I can get my Nechka back, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Otherwise, Nechka won't have any chance of reclaiming her past once I'm dead and gone. She won't remember me, and she won't even remember why her name is Nechka. When that time comes, she will be left to drift around the world all alone, unknowing of where she came from or where she should go. She is my daughter, the one to whom I gave the Nechka name. Whether it be as her mother or as a name engraver, I can't simply stand by and let her name disappear. Shilonin! <sighs> I'll take the central inscription with me. I'm going to completely disassemble it to confirm its components and uses, and I won't make any promises until I've checked everything. Say goodnight to Nechka for me, Auntie. Oh, wait. I've also finished the inscriptions for the Traveler in Paimon. Let me fetch them for you. I'm sorry it took me so long to finish them. Hold on, Auntie. The Traveler and Paimon have never met Nechka before, so you can't draw any memories from them. That wasn't my intention. They're just ordinary gifts. Please, take them. Huh? What was that noise? Nechka must have woken up and wants to get out of bed on her own. Sorry, I'll go check on her first. Nechka, don't try to get out of bed. Just tell Mom if you need anything. You go ahead and take care of Nechka, Auntie. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. There are a few things I want to tell you.
You two can wait outside for a moment. I just need to go in and grab something. The workshop is a little messy, so unfortunately, I won't be able to show you around. Oh, yeah, that's not really what I mean. It's not the mess that's really the problem. It's just that the workshop is cluttered with way too much stuff. Books, files, and even ancient texts I got from the masters of the night wind. Everything's piled up to the ceiling. You probably won't know where to step once you're inside. Kachina suffered quite an unfortunate series of events the last time she went inside. Well, I suppose it was my fault for being so focused on searching for information at the time that I forgot to lock the door. After entering the workshop, she was shocked to find herself face to face with a massive woven scroll from the Masters of the Nightwind, and then she turned around and knocked over a huge stack of forging blueprints. She tried to step out of the way, but tripped on a poster tube that was behind her, and then, boom, the forging blueprints came crashing down right onto her head. Oh, no! She's lucky I noticed in time. I found Kachina in a daze and managed to save her before an entire set of the history of the Children of Echoes was about to bury her. I then dragged her up to the second floor. Ever since then, Kachina always waits outside the door and doesn't dare take a step in whenever she comes to see me. Yeah, you're an artisan and craftswoman after all. We thought there would be weapons and armor hanging all over the place. But it seems more like a library than a workshop. Well, my primary work is forging ancient names, which is much trickier than making swords and tools. Aside from the necessary craftsmanship, I also need to consult many ancient texts. You probably already know that each ancient name represents a certain spirit, behind which are countless related stories to support it. In other words, the essence of an ancient name is the physical manifestation of a certain spiritual will. And, as a name engraver, when I'm working on a new ancient name, I'm not only trying to give it a physical shape, but more importantly, I'm also trying to understand the spirit contained within the name. And to do that, I have to collect as many related stories as possible and read through them all. But, as you might know, people tend to add a lot of uh, extraneous details when it comes to stories about themselves. For stories that have been clearly exaggerated or altered, I must gather other related stories and information as cross-references. This way, I can filter out all the absurd and exaggerated details and restore the person's life to its true nature. Only in true stories can you find the authentic spirit. And this is the only way for the spirit to become an ancient name that matches its essence. We've heard about the concept behind ancient names before, but after hearing you explain the details, Pilot can't help but think that ancient names are really powerful. Well, no matter how powerful ancient names could be, they would never be able to suddenly turn into a blade or allow you to smash through an entire cliff in one punch. It's just a form of spiritual power that's passed down from generation to generation. It doesn't have those kinds of physically tangible effects. Um, well, take your own names, for example. From the moment you appeared in this world, some person had already prepared a blessing for you. And that person then condensed this blessing into your name and gave it to you as a gift. It may feel like the moment you received your name is already in the past, but it will always stay with you and move with you in the future. Names are blessings for the future from people standing in the past. Well, that's what Auntie once told me. But with this blessing, people will become more confident as they walk into their future. D to put it another way, it's like having a lamp in your hand as you walk through the darkness of night. Oh, Paimon gets that. If you're alone when you're walking in the dark, it's easy to get scared and tired quickly. But if someone else is walking with you, then it won't be nearly as scary. And, well, you might still get tired, but it'll still be a whole lot better than walking alone. The Traveler always has Paimon by his side, though, so he'll never have to worry about that. Oh, Paimon sure many wish they could be in your shoes, Traveler. Paimon's always flying! Of course it gets tiring! But 
We're getting off topic. We can talk about that later. Anyway, this is what Plasoli told me when I was training as a name engraver. And to be honest, I've only understood 20% of what she said at most. I've never been able to figure out the rest. But doesn't that mean you basically don't get it? Well, that's not entirely true. Auntie and I have at least come to a consensus on the most important thing. Ugh, you know, I am sick of talking. We can talk about all of this later. Please, uh, wait a moment while I grab my things. Uh, did you hear a whole section of something collapse in there just now? <coughs> it's, it's fine, it's fine. It was just a bunch of very old ancient name records. I've already made copies of them. I, uh, kept this set of phlogiston wedges in the back so it wasn't easy to take out. I had to resort to brute force. Come on. Let's go disassemble the central inscription. It shouldn't take long. Here we are. This is the place. This cliff is pretty high. What are we going to do here? Are we going to climb to the very top and then throw this inscription down the cliff? I'm going to use phlogiston to make an engraving circle on the cliff wall. That will allow me to investigate the internals of the central inscription. Huh, now let me see if this thing can even turn on. I was still an apprentice the last time I used it. Before we attempt to engrave the inside pattern of an ancient name with phlogiston, we always use this to draw out the engraving diagram on a cliff or open ground. Only after we've confirmed that phlogiston can flow properly through the internal engravings can we start formally working on the small internal engravings of the ancient name. If we want to dismantle the central inscription in a non-destructive manner, we'll have to use this thing. I really don't want to engrave such a large diagram with my bare hands. Oh, so you'll be able to see what it looks like on the inside without ruining Tlasoli's inscription? Eh, for the most part. If it were just an ordinary, unfinished ancient name piece, I'd just take it apart and pour phlogiston into the internal engravings to see everything. But since it's a central inscription, it would be better not to destroy the blessing that Auntie has prepared for Nechka. So, Shilonen, does this central inscription fall under the 20% you understand about ancient names, or the other 80% you don't understand? Oh, don't worry. As I said, Auntie and I share an understanding of the most important principle, which is names are intrinsically valuable. Only by having names can things be sorted and categorized. They allow the world to become more orderly and identifiable. For example, when I order ore, I would usually say, I need volcanic crystals of about 35% purity and no more than 3% of impurities. Without specific names, I would only be able to go to the ore merchant and say, I want this and this. No, this isn't it. That one. No, not that one either. Yeah, you see what I mean? Names are a crucial part of how we standardize our workflow. Without names, oof, the work would be impossible. Yes, because forging ancient names is first and foremost a technical job. There's no debating that. As for the question of why it's important, as long as it does not affect your ability to perform your work, you'll gradually understand it as you put the process into practice. After all, creating an ancient name is quite the complicated process. <sighs> well, let me break it down even further. We're not in the tribe right now anyway. Essentially, by forging ancient names, I'm assigning nicknames to the heroes in Natland's history. Giving someone a name is a subjective expression. You just need to express your hopes and wishes for them. But giving someone a nickname is a much more objective expression. To come up with a fitting and accurate nickname requires much thought and observation. If ancient names or nicknames aren't descriptive enough, no one will remember them anyway. So the best I can do is gather all the information I could and try to come up with the most fitting nicknames possible. Even a minor mistake in the process could cause people to misunderstand the nickname. For a name engraver such as myself, such mistakes would be considered a major blunder. Paimon isn't trying to come up with a nickname for Shilonen. Besides, all of Paimon's nicknames have been very descriptive. Everyone can remember them. 
Whew. Now I'm curious. Why don't you, uh, come up with one for me? Uh, are you serious? Of course. This is also my line of work, you know. Go ahead. Um, a nickname? Shilonen. Well, she uses phlogiston to forge weapons and make names for others. Uh, um, Smith? <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad, and quite fitting, too. I'll remember it. But, uh, you should keep observing my work, Paimon. Maybe you'll come up with an even better nickname. Right, okay, time to make like a smith and start smithing. Watch closely. Amazing, Shilonid! You are running all over that cliff as if it was flat ground! Oh, no, it doesn't have anything to do with my tribe. It's just the, uh, phlogiston adhesive I have on my shoes. But after all that running around, I'll have to infuse them with more phlogiston again. Huh. I should prepare a spare supply of phlogiston to bring with me next time. More or less, yeah. I usually have at least the key equipment on hand. I can show them to you when we next find the time, but let's get to work first. Hmm, let me see. Start with Anchor 1 and activate it with Density 3 Phlogiston. Whoa! A super huge diagram just appeared! Tlasoli's central inscription is even floating! So are you done checking the inscription, Shilonin? How does it look? I didn't find any anomalies in the phlogiston engraving. All the adjustments are indeed based on ancient name engraving techniques. That means we can help Tlasoli and Nechka now, right? Yeah, well, probably, but I have good news and bad news. Oh, but I'm also just going to go ahead and share both, so it's not like you'll have a choice in the matter. Paima will cover her ears after the good news. Well, even if you cover your ears, the issue will still continue to exist. But, uh, you know, before we get to that, I want to ask the Traveler a question. What are your thoughts on absorbing memories? Um, yeah, well, sounds like something you'd say. But if you ask me, there's a problem with what Auntie said. It's, uh, hard to control the absorption of memories. And technically speaking, this type of inscription has the power to do far more than absorb memories related to a single person. By herself, Auntie can't handle that level and scope of work, but if she has accomplices, it is completely possible for her to use this inscription to accomplish far bigger things. Accomplices? You make it sound like she's committing a crime! Well, here's the good news. Yes, this blaze gem inscription would be the perfect tool to commit crimes, but we haven't found any accomplices or signs that she intends to put it to such uses. From a purely objective standpoint, we can consider that possibility as yet to be confirmed for now. The bad news is, there's still an underlying problem with this blaze gem inscription that cannot be ignored. I believe I've mentioned this before. Ancient names operate with the help of the Wyab, granting them the power to read information kept in the ley lines. In this process, the Wyab actually function like uh, relays helping the ancient name bearer sense the information from within the ley lines. If you remove the Wyab from the process and don't use any tools, then finding a specific story is akin to trying to scoop up a specific grain of sand from a rushing river. Yeah, exactly. Anyone who attempts to do so will likely lose most of their cognitive function or become a babbling madman who talks to themselves all day long. Now, let's consider the memories that Auntie has gathered as the ley line and uh, Nechka as the only ancient name bearer of this ley line. There's no way Auntie would let Nechka plunge into the river of memories without any tools. She'd only be overwhelmed by the surge of memories. And considering that Nechka has forgotten all of her past, she'll be unable to work on her own to accurately find the correct past. Only Aunt Tlisoli can help her filter the correct memories of her past. 
So, if my hypothesis is correct, Auntie is actually planning on turning herself into Nechka's Wyab to help her extract the corresponding memories in the different situations she may face. In an ideal world, this would be perfectly fine, as long as every extracted memory is correct, Nechka would essentially be getting her past back. And I also believe that there won't be any mistakes in everything that Auntie remembers about Nechka. But Auntie is not a Wyab. Her body won't be able to handle the load for long. But how can we solve this problem? No matter how we try, Tlasoli will... Names are blessings for the future from people standing in the past. I've also made up my mind. Come on, let's go see Auntie. Ah, uh, Shilonin, it looks like you've made your decision. Am I right? Yes, uh, here's some research that I've done. You can reference it to modify the way the central inscription operates. I'll also help you continue working on the Blaze Gem inscriptions, but I must have complete control over all the inscriptions and the ability to oversee their uses. The memories that can be absorbed by the inscription will be limited solely to Nechka's past. We'll plan a set time frame together from which the memories can be drawn from shortly. If you attempt to extract any memories beyond this scope, then I'll consider that as committing a criminal act and halt all work related to the central inscription. After the memory bank is constructed, the Blaze Gem inscription's absorption functions must be stopped immediately. Only functionalities for outputting memories will be kept. I accept. Thank you, Shilonin. I really... <sighs> Auntie, you know I can't stand it when you do this. If you needed my help, you should have just said so. There's no need to beat around the bush like you did. Using technology for ancient names to forge other things without permission is no trivial matter. I... Yes, it's a major departure from the technology's intended use, but it's nothing compared to a child who needs help, compared to a name that's about to be lost. But once this is all over, you must come with me to see Pakal and discuss everything that happened. That's fine. I'm willing to accept any punishment for my little Nechka. All right, let's clear off the table and come up with a plan. I need some time to consider how to let Nechka control the Blaze Gem inscription on her own and extract the memories from her past. Hmm. Oh, um, by the way, did you give the book to Nechka? How could I just hand her a birthday present that you specially brought for her? I've picked out a box and packaged it up. Wait till her birthday and then bring it to her. It'll be a nice surprise. No, it's just an old book. There's no need to... Oh! Is Nechka up again? But what was all that noise? It sounded like something broke! Uh-oh. That's not good. Let's go have a look. Nechka, don't hurt yourself. Shilonin, is that you? Uh, you're Nechka? How many times have I told you? Don't get out of bed on your own. You were running a fever yesterday. Hello, Nechka. Thank you for the book. I've already read it several times. You've already read it? But didn't Tlesoli package up the book that Shilonin brought? <sighs> no. She's all mixed up. The one she read isn't from Shilonin. It's one I bought for her before. A few days ago, she told me she wanted a book. I know nothing about these kinds of books, so I had no choice but to go to the tribe and look for a copy. I eventually found one and bought it for her. I put it in her room once I got back. Soon after, she suddenly developed a fever. I was so busy taking care of her that I forgot about the book and even forgot that she had asked you for a gift. Auntie, do you know which version of the book you bought? Which version? The shopkeeper said it was the one with the perfect ending to the story. Apparently that's the only one you can find on the market now. Ugh, oh, it's all my fault. You wasted your money and now 
It won't even be a surprise. Oh, it's all right. It's just a book. As long as Nishka enjoys it, that's what matters. Oh, right. Nishka probably doesn't know us. We're... You're Paimon and Mr. Traveler. Mom told me about you. Oh, <laughs> seems like everyone knows who we are now. Ah, Nichka seems to be doing pretty well today. Since she's been stuck indoors for the last few days, why don't we take her out for a walk? Take her for a walk? But considering her condition, I don't think she... Oh, don't worry, Auntie. She'll be safe with the Traveler and me. We won't leave the tribe, and if anything comes up, we'll be sure to find the doctor immediately. Besides, it's her birthday in a few days. And we need to go to the tribe to buy some things. Let's give her a proper celebration. What do you think, Auntie? I promise I'll be good, Mom. Didn't you say before that I need more fresh air? All right, all right. As you wish. I also happen to have a few repaired blaze gem inscriptions that I need to get back to the tribe. We can go together. Wait for a moment. I'll go get Nechka's water bottle and some towels. Ah, uh, some medicine. Oh, and a parasol. Talk about being prepared. It doesn't hurt to be prepared. Okay, let's go. Please be good now, Nechka. Don't cause any trouble for Shilonin and the others. Oh, you can let me carry these. And don't be a stranger, Nechka. Feel free to tell us anything. And even I was quite a handful for Auntie when I was little. <laughs> It's not often you get to go out to play, so just have fun! Everything will be fine! Okay, thanks everyone, and please don't worry, Mom. I'll be good. Tosoli, what brings you to the tribe today? Oh, and Nechka too! Oh, she seems to be doing much better now. She's even out and about. I'm sure it won't be long before she'll be playing with Chanil and the others. I hope so. Here, Ignal, this is your inscription. I've finished repairing it. Oh, thank you for bringing it back for me. Oh, by the way, I came across a piece of good quality ore a while ago. I was thinking of using it to make some pretty jewelry for little Nechka. I remember that Nechka would become so happy every time she saw a shiny ring. Right, Nechka? I'm sure she'd love that. Thank you. My pleasure. Give me a moment. I'll bring the ore. Oh, I can make the jewelry for her. What, uh, what kind would you like, Nechka? I would like... Something shaped like an ember core flower would be nice. She was always asking me before to make her an ancient name with an ember core flower design. Mm-hmm, noted. I'll make that as a gift for her next birthday. Sorry, Nechka. It won't be a surprise for you. That's okay. Thank you, Shalonin. Found it. Sorry to keep you waiting. Here, please take it. By the way, Nechka, feel free to write to me if you ever want to know more about ores. Well, I was shocked last time when you wrote me out of the blue asking for a volcanic crystal. Uh, sorry about that. She can hardly contain her curiosity now that she's started to recover. She's still too weak to go out whenever she wants, so she begs me every day to help her write letters to people in the tribe about all sorts of things. <laughs> That's how you know she's one of the children of Echoes. It's normal for us to be interested in Orr. Everything's looking up! Oh, we're just like the main character in the new version of To Kill the Brave when he was about to save his brother Remok. Uh... According to the story, we should be right around... Hmm, let Paimon see... Ah! Tequil prayed to the goddess of mountains and fire. Let my brother's name ever live on! I am willing to sacrifice my heart and blood in return! The goddess replied, I've heard your prayer, but your brother is no longer your kin. His name has sunken into the deepest of depths. Then... Tequil said, Turn my blood to fire so my heart may illuminate the depths. 
I will bring my brother back before my blood runs dry. Oh, you remembered that whole line, Nichka. Paima remembers that's exactly what the book... Uh, huh? Wait, what did the book say? Paima finished both books in one sitting. A lot of their content is nearly the same, so it's easy to get mixed up. But the ending in the older version is more interesting. Even if it's hard for kids to, well, completely understand. Oh, wait. Nichka hasn't read the other ending. It's okay. Just wait a bit and Paimon will read it out for you. Th that's not true. Actually, I already know the other ending. You already know the other ending? But didn't you only read the edition your mom got for you? Hey, what are you all chatting about so happily? Huh? Mom, Mr. Traveler and I were just talking about the ending of that book. We were just talking about how the bad guy was defeated and everyone returned home safely. It's a really happy ending. Aren't happy endings always nice? But if you already read the whole thing, then what will Mom have to read to you at bedtime? Guess you'll have to go to bed early tonight. But I'll buy you some more fairy tales next time, okay? Okay, Mom. It's a uh, pretty good quality. I'll be able to give Nechka a beautiful and durable piece of jewelry for her next birthday. But, you know, for now, let's focus on celebrating her upcoming birthday. Where are we headed to next, Auntie? Next, let's visit a Palan. He should be close by. Stay close, Nechka. Don't go too far. Yes, Mom. Why do my eyebrows keep twitching today? <laughs> Strange. That means you're about to hit the jackpot of Hush Palan. <laughs> I didn't expect to have two name engravers coming in today. Welcome. What are you looking to buy, Tlazoli? I'll give you a discount like usual. Whoa! Offering a discount just like that? Tlazoli sure has connections. She was once our name engraver and did a lot for the tribe. It's only fair that I offer her a discount. Thank you for your generosity. I've finished repairing your Blasium inscription. Here, have a look. Come on, Nechka, say thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, so this is Nechka. Tlazoli has shown me some pictures before. It looks like you're doing much better now. How about this? Go ahead and pick anything you'd like from the store. Think of it as a gift from me. N no, no, that's all right. Mom told me that you've already given a lot to our family. <laughs> oh, well, that was for your family. I've never given anything just for you. If you don't feel like it, you can also let your mom choose for you. Oh, no need to stand on ceremony, Auntie. Go ahead and pick something for Nechka. His drills and small clamps are good quality. The measurements of each part are exact, and they're always very durable. I always come here to buy things if I find myself in a pinch. Oh, do you have any child-friendly safety scissors? I remember seeing a few different styles. Hmm, I have a few in stock, but I put them in the back. Let me bring some out for you to pick. Oh, no need to bring them all the way here. Why don't we just go in the back and choose there? It should only take a moment. I don't know much about that kind of scissors. Why don't you just go yourself and... Well, there are too many different designs and varieties of kid scissors. If you don't come and help me choose, I won't be able to pick one that Nechka would like. Come on, Auntie. It'll only take a moment. And there goes Shalone and dragging Tlasoli off to buy more stuff. Oh, what a busy day. I won't run off. Um, Paimon, who's your favorite character in To Kill the Brave? Paimon's favorite? To Kill, of course. He went through a lot to rescue his family. In the old version of the story, he was never able to reunite with his family, but... He was still really strong and fought as best as he could. What about you, Nechka? Which character do you like? Uh, I like 
Remok. Oh, the one who was possessed by Kualikwe, but never forgot his brother Tequil. He was also an amazing character. If it wasn't for his determination, both he and his brother would have been defeated by Kualikwe in the final battle. Of course, a story's only interesting if you can really get immersed in it. Hey, Nechka, why don't we play pretend? You can be Rima, and Paimon will be Tequila, okay? Mr. Traveler, can I play the role of Kuatlikwe? But isn't she the villain? In the old version, she even ate Remok and took on his appearance. Ah, right. She read the version with a happy ending. And that one, Kuatlikwe, was defeated and the brothers both survived. Well, it doesn't matter. Only the lines at the end were different. You can go on ahead and say your favorite lines, Nechka. Paimon's read both versions, so she'll be able to play along. My favorite line is the one from the end. It's... Come here, Nechka. Look at you. You're sweating. Mom! Let me wipe your forehead. Now, drink some water. This child, you forget everything as soon as you start playing. We've uh, picked something out for Nechka. A Paish Palan will deliver it to Auntie's house once he's packaged it up. How was Nechka? Oh, we were just about to get to the exciting part. Uh, really? Oh, now that Paimon thinks about it, she loaned and has dragged Lasoli away from us a couple of times now. But why? L let's talk later. Just trust me and act normal for now. Oh, we should uh, head to our last stop, Auntie. It's real hot today, and we shouldn't let Nechka be in the heat for too long. Right. Let's go see Chevin and head back home. I finished repairing your blaze gem inscription, Chevin. I've also reinforced it, so it shouldn't fall apart so easily now. Thank you. Uh, how about the volcanic crystal? Was it usable? Yes. Thanks for that. You're welcome. I just want to see Nechka get better. Thank you, Miss Chevin. <sighs> it's fine. Honestly, you're both too polite for your own good. I was wondering where you got the ore for such a large-scale blaze gem inscription. So you must be one of Auntie's accomplices, then. Oh, Shilonin. Um... We already know what's going on. <sighs> you had me worried there. I thought we'd been found out. We'd be in real trouble if Bacall ever got wind of it. To be honest, I won't be able to cover it up for much longer. I've been traveling away from home every few days, and the ore reserves have noticeably decreased. The last time Bacall came and asked me about it, I could only say that I'd been using up a lot of ore to research new styles of jewelry. As for why I had been leaving so often, I said that I had found a new ore vein and wanted to extract some new gems from it. Ah, uh, sorry. I've been talking my head off. Please, come in and have a seat. Sure, we can sit for a moment, but... Miss Chevin, can I go see some of the jewelry over there? You mean Amisha's work? Sure, go ahead. Remember to stay in the shade as much as you can. Uh, Paimon wants to go too! We'll go together! Paimon hasn't looked at Natlin's jewelry very closely yet. Really? Then Paimon's gonna take a good look at what they have! You haven't bought any jewelry for a while, Auntie. Why don't you pick one out? <sighs> Come on, Nichka! We don't know anything about Natlin's jewelry, so you can help us pick something out! Mr. Traveler, I... Come here, Nechka. Uh-huh. Sorry, Chevin and Shalonin, but it's already getting late. We should be heading back now. It'll be Nechka's birthday in a few days, and there's still a lot for us to do before then. No problem. I'll be sure to bring her some beautiful jewelry to celebrate. Mom, I... You're getting hot again. Here, Mom will carry you. Let's get going. You forget to take care of yourself once you start playing. Let's go back and we'll have a talk. I... I didn't. Nechka, I never taught you to lie. 
Sorry, Mom. Uh, I, I, uh, uh... Nichka's looking at us. My mom feels like something's not right. What should we do? No, Nichka was having so much fun today that she forgot the time. It's not a big deal. Let me help carry her home. I'm worried you would also have to recover if you carried her the whole way. No, it's fine. I'll carry her. Let's go, Nechka. It's time to go home. Thank you, everyone, for spending so much time with us today. Please be sure to come to Nechka's birthday party. All right. It's nearly bedtime for Nechka, so let's part our ways here. Oh, Auntie, remember to give her the book, that uh, copy of To Kill the Brave I brought. I went to a lot of trouble to find it. I understand. Really, do you think I'd let your efforts go to waste? It's very special to receive a book from you. I'm sure she'll put it somewhere safe. Right, Nechka? Y yeah. Thanks, Shalonin. Oh, put it somewhere? Isn't she going to read it? Well, I've read the story to her many times already. She's even memorized nearly every line. Oh, that won't be a problem, Auntie. Nechka's probably never heard this version of To Kill the Brave. Oh, what's different about this version? The majority is about the same, but the ending is different from the one that you bought her. The one I gave her is the unedited version that was originally published. It was released long before Nechka fell ill. Oh, but I remember you were never very interested in fairy tales, Shilonin. Huh. Well, I was just thinking that if what you said about Nechka's illness is true, she shouldn't be able to remember anything about her past before her illness. So, the ending to the original version of To Kill the Brave is also part of the past that she should have forgotten. In other words, if she hasn't recently read the old version of the story, then she shouldn't possibly know the ending, right? I don't understand. Why are you so concerned about the ending of this book? Even if she does remember the ending, what does that prove? Maybe she snuck out somewhere when I wasn't watching and read the first edition of the story. Yeah, okay, that is a possibility. After all, she does remember things that have happened recently. In which case, yeah, let's go ask around the tribe and see if anyone remembers Nechka reading the book. There are only a few shops in the tribe that sell books, or we can just ask Nechka where she'd read it. The booksellers all have inscriptions, so there's a chance that their memories... So, you admit that the inscriptions can affect the tribe's current memories? I was very clear that I would consider that a crime and would stop all work on it. There must be a few more books at home. I... I do not wish to see your blood be reduced to ash, but I have seen the light of your heart and spirit. I beg your pardon? Nechka, where did you read that book? Answer me! Go home, Nechka. Uh, I... I... Are you disobeying me? You're the one who wrote me the letter, Nechka. You're the one who wanted the book. Only you can speak for yourself. We're listening, Nechka. Right here, right now. Remember my name, brother. As long as you remember me, I will never have left. Silence. That's the line from the old ending. Nechka remembers it. I know. I know everything. Shalonin, help me, please, help me. Ah, ah! Something's blocking the door. Get back. Shalonin, wait for us. <sighs> the tunnel is blocked. We can't go in. There might also be traps. Whoa. What are all those things on Nechka's walls? Hmm. It seems Auntie put all the extra inscriptions she made here. If she's trying to finish that ancient name, there's only one place she could go. Come on, follow me.
You got here quick. Impressive. Nechka's up there! What are you planning to do to her? I never lied to you. All this time, I've only been trying to save my daughter. Even though she's not my daughter yet. But once everything is over, she will really become my Nechka. What is she saying? Is she not Nechka? So you figured it out. I want to use memories to awaken my Nechka. She has stayed in the Night Kingdom for far too long. She's afraid of the dark and cold. I'm the one who made her stay there alone, so I must bring her back. Don't worry, Nechka. Mom hasn't forgotten anything. She has always remembered your name. <sighs> I'm afraid so. Then, who's that girl lying up there? She's a child from my tribe. Her parents were killed in the same abyss attack, but wouldn't you know it, her birthday is the same as that of my Nechka. I raised her and took care of her for many years. I thought that taking her in would help me feel better. I was so happy the first time she was willing to call me mom, but then I suddenly felt very, very scared. Is she really my child? My child's name is Nechka. It could only be Nechka. How could I be happy? M my little Nechka is still waiting for me. Waiting for me to get her home. As I said, I only want to bring Nechka back, even if it costs me everything. And now, the time has come for me to pay. As for my useless ancient name, <laughs> it's finally time to put it to good use. If you're not willing to help me, then you can become the fuel for Nechka's ancient name. <sighs> Shilonin, you have yet to make a move. I take it you're examining the inscriptions around you. It's no use. I've already set up the blaze gem inscriptions, and the engraving diagram has already begun to run. It's all thanks to your ideas. Now, the central inscription will finally become Nechka's ancient name. After Nechka returns, I'll make sure to invite you to her birthday party. You're... you're not gonna go up there, are you? <sighs> There's a flaw in this engraving diagram. The weak point is almost about to activate, so on my mark. Don't worry, Nechka. Don't worry. Mom is here. Three! Mom will always be with you. I'll never forget you. Two! Wake up, Nechka. Now. Please, wake up. One! I saw Nechka and was speaking with her, but now, where? Where did she go? Nechka? Nechka? Where are you? Answer, Mummy. Please. Please. Shilonin, you saw her too, didn't you? You saw my little Nechka. I felt her hands and hugged her. I was right. I was right. Those gray shadows were just a minor mistake. I just need to restart the ritual again. All right, I'll start it again and Nechka will... Have you still not come to your senses, Auntie? Hmm? What senses? I was not wrong. Nothing about what happened was wrong. She's just a little upset and was trying to ignore me. That child sure knows how to throw a tantrum. But, but I understand. I can accept that. Enough, Tlisoli. The person you summoned with the blaze gem inscription wasn't the real Nechka at all. You collected memories of Nechka from countless people, but you forgot one thing. Among what you gathered were not only real memories, but also countless emotions. Didn't you realize what kind of emotions people would feel upon seeing Nechka's condition? When people held a dying child's hand, when they felt her faint breath and saw the helplessness in her eyes, when they sensed her body growing colder and colder, what could they feel but abject pain and sorrow? 
I... I took those emotions. You absorbed those emotions into the Blaze Gem inscriptions and solidified them as a piece of her past. Those gray figures were projections of that past. They could only reproduce the appearance of Nechka in her sickly state. What the real Nechka wished to say was drowned out by those twisted and painful thoughts. I... I didn't want things to turn out like this. All I wanted was to remember Nechka, to see her again. Nechka has always been with you, Auntie. Everything has long been recorded on your ancient name. The one you said was useless. You exhausted every option and sacrificed everything in the hopes of saving your daughter. That, that is undeniable. But have you forgotten the true meaning of your own ancient name? My ancient name is Undugu. The immovable love between you and Nechka has already been recorded in your ancient name, but you chose to ignore that. Names are blessings from the past to the future. You, you told me that, Auntie. You gave Nechka her name, her first blessing. But now you've turned her name into a prison by taking an innocent child captive, and you've imprisoned yourself. Nechka is everything to me. Without her, I can't see any future for me. And as for blessings... <laughs> what blessings have I had since the day she passed? I see her in my dreams every day, grasping my hand, telling me she's in pain, asking me to hold her. But I can't say anything. I can't grasp her hand. All I can do is shout her name over and over again until I wake up. Every day, every single day, I've hated myself and ancient names too. Who knows? Maybe hate would have been the only thing left to her too. You think Nechka would have come to hate you? Auntie, do you still remember the last words Nechka ever said to you? Do you remember what her final words really were? I... I... The reason you haven't felt blessed is because you've forgotten the true past. Auntie, you've been wallowing in memories of your imagination and refused to let go of them. A name without a past is nothing but a withered tree with no roots, rotting without a future. It's over, Auntie. It's all over now. Uh, slowly now. Why don't you stay lying down? Oh, on second thought, this might not be the best place to rest. Shilon and Nechka, uh, Nepecha, can already stand now, so we made our way over. Thank you, Paimon and Mr. Traveler. I'm fine, really. The real Nechka helped me just now, so it doesn't hurt much anymore. That's good. If you became Nechka, then this story would really become the To Kill the Brave. This isn't the place to chat. Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, but what about Tlasoli? Oh, don't worry. She won't be able to cause any more trouble now. All right, I've locked Auntie in the house with a few ropes. I'll take her to the tribe shortly to be punished for what she did. As for now, we can get away from the house and get some sun. After dealing with all of that, I'm completely out of energy. She's already planned out everything. She alone and sure doesn't waste time. Oh, it's still so scary to imagine. Tosoli wanted to turn her adopted child into Nechka, and she even nearly succeeded. Yeah, she was so cool in the final moments, she went right into action and took control of the situation instantly. Well, it's all thanks to Nempeka's resilience. She never gave up. If it weren't for her bravely trying to get help, then I wouldn't have noticed Auntie's plan so easily. 
It was thanks to all of you encouraging me. After all, this was already the last idea I could think of. I tried to get the attention of many others who visited before, but they were all either quickly whisked away by Tlesoli or simply refused to believe me. Even if I told them everything, Tlesoli would just blame my illness to cover it up. All she had to do was start to cry, and then the guest would try to comfort her, but completely forget about me. She would inspect all the letters I sent and any gifts I received, and then, if I didn't comply, she would force me to drink some strange medicine. It would put me to sleep for a few days, and it would be hard for me to remember anything. I would see a lot of weird things while I slept and the walls around me would start talking. I would be so scared every day. If I wasn't able to get your help this time, I might have just given up. You have us now, Napeka. If anyone dares to hurt you again, the Traveler and Shilonim will send them flying! Y yeah Sorry, I... I just can't help it. <laughs> you are already super brave! And you even managed to call Shilonin for help. Oh, you definitely found the right person. Shilonin isn't the kind of person who gets distracted easily by crying. She pays attention when someone's talking and doesn't miss a beat. And it was because of your help that I was able to pick up on the details. Without you, it would have been extremely difficult for her to communicate that she needed help. Tlesoli would certainly be more on guard if I tried to speak with her and would probably have just kept Napeka locked up in her room again. So we had a part to play too! But where did Tlesoli even get the confidence to try this scheme? When Nechka was alive, surely many tribe members would have tried to help her. Was she not scared that someone would realize that Napeka wasn't Nechka? That's certainly a possibility. The inscription she created would not only collect information related to Nechka's past, but also actively erase people's memories of Nechka. It's uh, similar to graffiti. If you want to paint something new on a wall that has been painted before, then first you must remove the old painting. It's possible that I was also one of her targets, which would explain why she was so willing to let me have the central inscription. Whoa, and you still took it? If it were Paimon, she would have thrown that thing away the first chance she had! Well, you can't uncover the truth without taking some risks, right? If I hadn't disassembled the inscription myself, I would have never realized her actual motives. So you suspected her from the very beginning? Oh, no, she's my auntie after all. How could I have seen her as a villain from the start? The most I did was keep the possibility and a corresponding plan in mind, and it was just our luck that the worst-case scenario actually happened. But now that I look back on it, we still managed to rescue a suffering child, even if that wasn't our original intention. Anyway, I think we've just about summarized everything and praised each other enough by now. <sighs> Everything is finally over, and Napeka can finally be herself. So, what should I do now, Shalonin? You should do whatever you like, of course. No one's going to lock you up anymore. But I... I don't know what I can do. Everything I know is about Nechka. What she'd like to eat, which flowers she enjoyed... How she acted and spoke? I'm not her, but I can only be like her. I, I don't know, Shalonin. I just don't know. Oh, don't worry, Nabeka. The Blaze Gem inscription isn't working anymore. No one will force you to be somebody else again. But I no longer remember anything about myself now besides my name. What if I never remember my life and lose all of my past? Uh, I'm scared, Shalonin. Uh, 
What should I do? <sighs> oh, don't cry, Napeka. Here, take this. I took some ore from Tlesoi's collection and made this as a mold. A blaze gem inscription! You can make them too? Oh, of course not. It's just a pretty piece of stone. Take it. I've engraved your name, Napeka, on the top. This, this is your first blessing, the one you received from a pair of people who loved you with all their hearts. It has always protected you and stood over you. For all of past, present, and future, it's never strayed far. But I don't even remember the names of my parents. I, I don't remember anything. Huh. Eh, I won't make any big promises and say everything will return to normal. I'm not sure what kind of future you will face. I can only promise that no matter what the future holds, your name will never fade. This is a blessing given to you by a name engraver. You'll continue to grow and mature as a sapling sprouts upward and becomes a healthy tree, or as birds spread their wings to fly high into the sky. Your name is your starting point, as well as your guide. Remember your name and everything you've experienced, and you'll know how to step into your future. I... I'll do my best. You can do it, Nepeka! Thank you all. Shalonen, Paimon, and Mr. Traveler. If you really can't come up with what to do, don't worry. Just relax and take it easy. We're from the same tribe, after all. If nothing else works, I can always go to the elders and look up your history. And until then, you can stay at my workshop. I can handle another mouth to feed. Oh, I don't know if the plan will work. I'm not even sure who I should look for. Well, rather than placing our hopes on a plan that relies so heavily on luck, we should just focus on ourselves. Well, anyway, enough about all that for now. Let me take Tlesoli back to the tribe first. Oh, uh, come with me, Napeka. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I nearly forgot that we haven't even had dinner yet. What would you like to eat? Huh? Oh, anything. I'm not picky. Oh, good. Let's go. We have a lot of work to do. We have a very busy future ahead of us. Oh, and, uh, one more thing. Happy birthday, Napeka. Oh, you're here. Everything's been taken care of now. I was just about to go have a rest. Well, the tribe is still discussing that. I mean, not many have ever used ancient names to commit a crime. Well, <laughs> Pakal will have a lot on his plate. What I do know is that Tlesoli's workshop will be closed permanently, and any remaining incomplete blaze gem inscriptions will be completely destroyed. And as for the completed Blaze Gem inscriptions, I'll be handling them, which, whew, yeah, yet another hassle to deal with. <sighs> anyway, at least her ancient name is fine. Otherwise, we'd have a real mess on our hands. Oh, and speaking of ancient names, I actually have some good news. The memories that were absorbed by the Blaze Gem inscriptions can be restored to their owners. Now, once all the Blaze Gem inscriptions stop working, the memories will return to their respective owners. Yeah, that's right. Huh. Wait, now that I think about it, in her attempt to get Nishka to come back, Auntie made the entire tribe forget about her. Now, Nishka really is gone, but everyone is about to remember her. <sighs> what a bizarre turn of events. 
She's resting in my workshop. I contacted others from the tribe and told them about my plan to conduct an official investigation into her history. The tribe hasn't responded yet, so I'm planning to take her in for now and teach her some crafting skills. But that's for another time. For now, she should just rest and sleep. After all, she's got a busy future ahead of her.